When the government goes back to work, thankfully, the federal employees will get repaid. We won't. Now, having been in business for upwards of 30 years, I have a four-year-old daughter. My health insurance, I pay for my own health insurance. It's about $1,500 a month for me, my wife, and my daughter. I never thought that I would ever see the day that I would start thinking that it's probably better for me to be poorer and get something for free or cheaper, like Obamacare. Because I believe if I start thinking like that, and if everybody starts thinking like that, we're in deep trouble. That's where we're headed. Yeah. basically 
more people coming into a system than going out, it looks disastrously when the tide starts going the opposite direction. And so what's happening now is the tide starts to go out the opposite direction. There is, with a unified budget, there is no trust fund, if you will, in Washington, D.C. with Social Security money. An IOU that represents the full faith and credit of the United States government and its taxing authority goes in. What happens Which is going to be defaulted. Right. And so you can stack those up, and the only way you can recoup those IOUs, though, is by raising taxes and, or cutting other parts of government to come up with the cash, and then it gets real, real complicated real fast. So I'd say stay tuned. That's its own nightmare, well above uh, what we're dealing with right now. On, 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 on how you fund the CR, but it's a problem. I, I, I simply call it that. Yes, ma'am. Um, we've identified now essential and non-essential federal workers. So this would be a great opportunity to get in there then and the non-essential to look at those programs. I worked for the federal government for eight years as a political appointee. And when I, that were uh, in the area of disability, and we all want to help people with disability. I still teach children with disabilities. But there were over 200 programs for people with disabilities. And we need, and Congress has oversight on that. They've had studies after study that we need to look at these. That's too much overlap. Another thing in these federal <laughs> Okay, but that's okay. But let me get on. But when I served President George W. Bush, I saw people give awards that shouldn't have gotten awards. That was your money. They gave awards. I, somebody even gave $52,000 for an award. People in South Carolina don't even make this. I couldn't believe it. I left Washington in disgust. I said, I'd rather teach and hold my head up high. We've heard a lot of things tonight. I think one of the issues we're all talking about here is part of the problem is that it's been a partial shutdown, and there are people that are picking winners and losers in this situation. And as long as that's continuing and that everyone across the federal government isn't feeling the pain, they're going to be picking winners and losers. So there's got to be some incentive for those people that are put us in this situation to move off of that. And I don't know how you can bring that about in your position. My question is, what can we do for you as a group of citizens? Are there people we can write? Are you getting support from our state senators? If you're dealing with uh, the situation uh, and writing a letter to the Speaker of the House, from a citizen's viewpoint from the first congressional district of South Carolina, would that be helpful? I mean, you know, it's cumulative. Uh, and, and, and so, I mean, you know, y'all are having an impact right now. I mean, the TV camera's in the back. Uh, there's a gentleman here from Washington. I don't know where he went. It was here a minute ago. Uh, <laughs>
and um, I'm a victim of um, some very brutal crimes, um, that, and that's what makes me disabled. Um, otherwise, I would be working and going to my own along with everybody else. Um, I have um, tried to exercise my rights with the United States court system, and um, I'm not getting much help with that. Can I cut you off? Yeah. Um, it sounds like there was uh, April, raise your hand in the back. Um, I've got a couple of folks in the office who were not furloughed. Uh, and uh, it sounds like an individual story that you may not want to share with the whole group, in which case we'd love to help. That's part of our job. And do you want me to do that or can I cut you off? I've, I've been in touch with your office, and, okay. and I think it, if it's April Durr, yeah. you know, she called me just the other day. Okay. There are several issues that um, I've let you know about. Okay. Email, but I did want to show up tonight and let you know that as far as disabled people go, um, the threats that are being, that are coming through to us sound um, very intimidating, um, and um, we don't like being felt. You know, we don't like having that feeling. And my mom is 65; she's disabled. She's been disabled for a while, and she that that was kind of what she said today when I told her I was going to be coming out here tonight. So um, thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me here. And, and thank you again. October 17th. We haven't even talked about that. You have both of them at the same time. We're going to have economic disaster, and we don't need any more economic disaster in this country. The other thing is, I'm a retired physician. We are going to have a public health crisis because the HHS is cutting back, and CDC is not going to be able to tell us. Flu's already out. We've got flu in South Carolina. So we're going to have a big flu season this year. They're not going to be able to tell us where we need to shift the majority of trying to push people to get vaccinated. And it's a, it's, a real, it's a real problem that we have never had before, and we need to get a clean CR, get us past this debt ceiling problem, and deal with these public health problems. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you for being here, Congressman. 
Um, I'm active military. I've served over the Persian Gulf the past couple of years. Um, Thank you. I, well, my, my pleasure. So, uh, I, I feel bad for the federal employees. I feel bad for the civilians. Uh, I don't feel too bad for myself. I made the choice to be active duty military. Um, if you want to cut down the, the military, remember what happened when Brack shut down the Navy base. All right, we're just recovering now in Charleston. I'm from California. This is my home now. You do not want to cut military spending because it's going to devastate Charleston and South Carolina. That's one thing. Second thing is, again, I'm sorry for this government shutdown, but you know what? It happened. Fix it. Go there. Now is the time. You're partially shut down. Make decisions. Rebuild. Do it piecemeal. And cut out all the, pardon me, cut out all the bullshit that we don't need to spend money on. And starting fresh. Right. Hit the things that are important, hit the veterans, hit the disability, hit yeah. some education, and work all the way up, just like this uh, right. woman over here talks about. And I see it being in government as well, being in the military government, that there's wasteful spending everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. If we can afford to go without so many people, sorry, right. maybe they need to privatize a lot of those things. Yeah. Thanks for your time. My name is Robert Jenkins. I'm um, part of the uh, Charleston Public Schools. My question is, is, what do you think the impact of so much money being in politics uh, right now, and um, how do you think that it's influencing this problem that we're having? Funding that came as a result of some group, that whatever, whatever. So I'd say it is, it is, uh, it is always been tied to politics. I suspect always will be. Um, I think that the key, and this is where I've always stood, which is to have it open and disclosed. Uh, that's why when I was governor, uh, you know, we actually pushed to actually get them to go online, and they said it couldn't be done. Ultimately, we got it done in saying campaign contributions ought to be open right up to the, you know, the last minute. So people can say, well, hey, I hear what he's saying, but you know, is there something else that's driving what uh, he's saying and where it's coming from? So I've been for public disclosure. I, does it have an impact? Undoubtedly. Uh, the degree to which on this one, I, I don't know. It's you know, that's probably the more the foundation of where a lot of people come from on different issues. Not so much this particular crisis point. This is just sort of a collision that took off and it sort of grown from there. Is my take. Um, uh, okay, sure. Last one. Uh, okay. Um, I've wanted to have a baseline with you for a long time. Well, then there's... this is probably not the place yes. to do it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very gracious. Um, I thank you for your service and for yep. things, um, hearing me about other issues. Um, something I've learned um, just before coming into this meeting tonight that I wanted to share with you that are concerns. Um, it's concerning David. Walker, the former comptroller for the United States. I know, yes. Yes, and he gave a presentation speech to the National Press Council and shared um, comprehensive numbers and information with Congress regarding our economic um, downfall that is happening and spiraling. Um, he wrote a book, it's uh, ironic that you brought up IO USA. He did a documentary and uh, wrote a book concerning this. Um, one of the things that he was pitching was that we are paying so much of our taxpayers' money to other countries for their viability and, and structures, just rebuilding their, their countries, third world countries. I quite frankly feel that we are turning into a third world country. Yeah. And I would like to see our monies come back home, yes. as we were told um, in the Port Authority for South Carolina with the Vice President Joe Biden. Manufacturing was supposed to come back to South Carolina. The speech was in sourcing, no longer outsourcing. Um, I would like to see that follow through, and unfortunately, we had the shutdown right after that speech. 
I also learned that um, after the uh, military is to leave Afghanistan, that taxpayers' money is going to be paying for Afghanistanian police until the year of 2018. I feel that's a solution that we could really resolve and save taxpayers' money, put it back in the budget, save it for all, but we put Congress back to work. Like I said, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I'll be here till midnight. However long y'all want to talk, we'll do that. I, I want to give you all real credit, though, which is uh, you saw something occur here that would never happen in Congress. This is the same room for an hour and 20 minutes, uh, uh, more than that, with each other. And in many cases, had very different opinions and perspectives, and yet everybody listened to the other side, and it was civil. And I admire that. That's a credit to you all. Would you all give yourself a round of applause? I'll continue to try and decipher the tea leaves as best I can to try and uh, turn to try and represent your viewpoint in Washington. I look forward to visiting with you all.